Uh, okay, time to welcome in Devin Choksi. He's joining us on the show this morning. Uh, Devin, always great to have you on. Uh, and very interesting times that we live in, right? With the market having to digest a lot of uh, unexpected surprises yesterday. So what's the sense, Devin? I mean, the numbers from where they stand right now, it looks like in all probability we are getting an NDA government, but it's going to be a coalition government with different dynamics. How much uh, or how materially does that alter uh, the, the sort of narrative, the course, the trajectory for the market, if at all? Yes, very good morning. Well, giving some loud thought on this subject, uh, the Prime Minister has got an incredible ability to manage the relationships. I think he has demonstrated his ability in the last 10 years in global relationship management as well. I guess I think it's time now for him to demonstrate these abilities for the partner relationship in the parliament. Should this particular relationship management take care of uh, the partnership that you are having in the parliament, probably some of the harder reforms that he has always intended to could possibly become a reality. And that's what the street is looking out for. In my viewpoint, I think at this point of time, one would like to believe that these five years, I think, is going to be a drive wherein uh, the clean reforms, the sharper reforms will have to take place. And that's what I guess I think the state is asking for. Should that happen, then I don't think that these numbers would probably affect us beyond a level now. Of course, I think the parliament challenges will continue, but I think that is something which this country is blessed with. I think we will deal with ideas. All right. Uh, hi, Devin. Good morning and good to see you. And well, Devin, you know, you need to customize your portfolio according to the things to come. And as of now, the markets believe that maybe the consumption theme will get, uh, you know, more importance than the CAPEX themes. And maybe valuation wise as well, there is some comfort over there. What is your view? Do you believe that these FMCG names now deserve to be getting a higher amount of your money that you'll be uh, allotting to equities? Or will you, you know, still look at buying some of these CAPEX themes on dips? Hi, Nigel. Good morning. Well, to me, I think the apex and the consumption, they are the two sides of one coin. You first put money into capex, it results into a higher amount of disposable income in the hands of people. And then the discretionary non discretionary spending takes place thereafter. So I guess I think the choice is not there. Probably I think they will have to continue with the capex program in the economy. And fortunately, I think the financial numbers are with them. On one side, they have got a stronger GDP growth. On the other side, I think they have already got, I think, the industry producing better results and putting in more money now into the system. And as a result of which, I think more amount of disposable income in the hands of people. The current GDP of around close to 4 trillion, suppose if this growth rate continues, then possibly I think we are going to see 10, 12 million of GDP in uh, 2035. And that in itself, I think, would create an equivalent amount of uh, current GDP, equivalent amount of that GDP would be the saving the investment going forward in 10 years. So I guess I think the consumption is a natural outcome of uh, the spending that the government is doing. And there is no choice. I think they will continue with the higher amount of capex uh, in the economy. So that I think the consumption and the tax ratios keep on improving thereafter. Right. Uh, <clears throat> Devane. I was sort of uh, talking about PSUs this morning, uh, earlier today, uh, and uh, a lot of questions because that's where most of the action has been, right? So how to navigate that space? And I thought maybe what ha happens is some of the sort of illiquid, not backed by fundamentals so much, just pure momentum, uh, you know, gains beget gains kind of stocks, right? And there are lots of them there, and especially the, the smaller ones. Uh, you, you know, sort of there is uh, profit take, taking and maybe more pullback and general lack of in, in interest there. And some of the larger, uh, sort of, you know, more stronger, fundamentally stronger names, I mean, there is action. So maybe, you know, I was talking about Coal India on one end and maybe on the other end, names like, you know, MMTC and that uh, long cohort of stocks uh, of, of that sort. Do you think that's the way to sort of uh, look at this space, especially for our retail audience, Devin? Yeah, Prashant. I guess I think uh, more importantly, over a period of time, you will learn two things. Over a uh, longer period of time, I think it is a growth rate which determines the price earning ratio, the valuation. Suppose if you are growing the company at a 20% rate of growth and every four years the size of the company gets doubled, then you are justified to give 25 uh, as a price earning ratio. Suppose if anything over and above that, whatever you give in the price earning ratio in this kind of situation, it is only due to the liquidity factor, which could be seasonal also at the same time. But the rational happens for a longer period of time, where I think it gets rationalized. So this is where I think we have been following the discipline in the portfolio all along. 
uh, yes, in a given situation, I think you have been seeing so some of the PSU companies have been commanding the price earning ratio of 40, 50, 60, etc. I would think that I think unless they catch up with the earnings, probably I think it's not justified. So that rule stays, whatever may be the condition in the market, that rule stays. And we follow that rule, I think, really just. So I don't think that I think we should be getting carried on with it. Maybe some correction in the price earning ratio at this point of time in some of the PSU companies where the earning growth is high. It becomes an opportunity for investment in, in, in some names, definitely for sure. You're going to give us one name? One, one such uh, name? Well, uh, well, I think uh, maybe uh, State Bank of India is one company where I feel that I think the size of the balance sheet is getting doubled in four years' time from now on. And we believe that I think this particular company is offering enough amount of growth opportunity for investors. But there is a disclaimer right. standard to it. Yeah, I think this time of we add that. Uh, they've been always great to chat with you. A short conversation, but we'll have you back on for more. Thank you very much for joining us, Devin Choksi, uh, with some perspective on things. We'll take a quick.